Hello, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm brewing a Mertzen or Marzen or Mersen. Uh, basically, it's a March beer in Germany. Uh, the brewed in March, well, traditionally they were, and then they were served in late September for the Oktoberfest. So there was no brewing between sort of April and September in Germany. Uh, it was like a traditional thing many years ago, and it was all to do with the heat and stuff. Um, so this beer was brewed in March, lagered until September, and then brought out for the Oktoberfest. Um, so I've never done one before, so I'm going to do one this time, this year, sorry. And um, yep, yeah, so what I'm using here in the malt, I've crushed it. So I've got 44% of this is Vienna malt, 39% Munich malt, 9% Carapils, 4% Cara Munich type one for a little bit of color and a little bit of uh, malty backbone as well and a bit of acidulated malt just to help with that ph so i've got my water salts there i've got pearl pearl hop for bittering and then i've got some halatal blanc there for halfway through around the 30 minute mark and i'm using a yeast uh, from a pills beer brewed uh, last year and i've harvested that yeast broke back to life done a starter so I've got to get on with the brew day and it's not going to be a grain to glass this one because it's going to be September before I taste it so I'm just going to do my brew uh, give you the recipe in the process so the first thing I'm doing is getting my strike water up to 70 because I want to be mashing in around about 67 i want to try and go for like a medium body on this 66 to 67 is my uh, target for my mash gonna do a 75 minute mash and a 60 minute boil uh, hopefully i get a, a good ph on this and uh yeah let's let's see uh the ibus i'm aiming for is around about 30 uh, for this because of the aging i think the ibus may just sort of fade a little bit so it'll bring it round around 20 25s by the time I'm drinking it so uh, that's uh, that's my plan so as you can see I've got the the bag in the pan so it's a brew in the bag all grain recipe all grain brew stove top and hope hoping to get around about seven liters batch on this um, so uh, a little bit higher than normal but yeah I'm hoping for about seven liters Hopefully you can see that. So I'm aiming for that 70 and we're pretty much going to get there round about. Well, saying that, look at that. As soon as I said that, it went down one. So we're just about to get there. The 70, which is going to give me a chance to mash in. There we go. Okay, so hit the temperature. Going to put all this grain in the bag. And then I'm going to use uh, a whisk just to make sure there's no dough balls. Also, I'm gonna plan on doing a bit of a decoction mash, like a single decoction on this, just on the stove, just take some out near the end of the mash, start to boil it and add it back in, hopefully get some caramelization flavors. Okay, so like I say, just got the, the whisk in. This will help me get the temperature reduced as well. And I can let it rest for that 75 minutes. Put a couple of towels on top, put, obviously put the lid on, a couple of towels on top. I also use an old hoodie as well. I put that on the pan first, tie the arms around the pan, just a bit more insulation, and then put a couple of towels on the lid just to hold that temperature. So I'm gonna add the salts in now. So this is just my water pack profile i'm aiming for like a munich water profile on this so for my water around here that was just to add a little bit of baking or bicarbonate of soda and a little bit of uh, chalk so that's all the, that's all i've done for the uh, water profile and the additions the salt additions for that so the water around here is not too bad at all so hopefully it'll work out okay when i say about the hoodie that's the idea. Just tie the arms around. Keep a bit more insulation. There we go. 75 minutes for the mash. So we're getting close. Uh, we're getting close now to the uh, <clears throat> end of the mash, and you can see how temperature using that uh, 
the hoodie, a couple of towels on the stove top and I'm happy with that. So we're getting to close to the uh, end of the mash. Now I'm going to do the decoction. So I'm going to take about a quarter of a mash out, boil it, add it back in and then get up to a mash out temperature around about 75. Um, like I said, my, the decoction point for me is just to add flavour. It's, it's not needed because the... Uh, the malts nowadays, you know, they're so more advanced. They've you know, come so much further than they did. You know, 200 years ago or so, when you used decoction mashing for raising temperature and getting the, you know, all the enzymes and the sugars uh, working. Uh, but now we're uh, so modified the malts that uh, we don't really need to do it. And I'm just doing it to add a little bit of flavour and I just like uh, to add that process in as well. So how I'm going to go about this to get the mash out is going to use a, a slatted spoon you know so get some mash so the spoon so somebody work stage you only want some of that uh the the, the wort or you know the liquor uh, in there but you just want to boil it you, you basically like i said before you just have to flavor so i'll put this into a smaller pan and get it boiling so there you go, there's the uh, the grains into the smaller pan now. So put this on the heat, get this to a boil, boil it for about five minutes, then add it back into the mash and then get that mash temperature. This will help rise it a little bit from that 67. I'm just looking at 75 for a mash out. I just put a little uh, a note in here now to briefly explain the coction mashing and uh, why it was used. But you can see now it's uh, Starting to heat up, and I just want that, like I say, the caramelization, the Maillard, or Maillard, probably said that wrong, you know, that effect. What I would say is don't walk away from it. You don't want it to burn. You don't want any of them burning flavours in your beer. You just want the caramelisation. So make sure you got a spoon in, stir it a few times, and just keep an eye on it and just stay with it. Okay, so time now. It's been on the boil for about 10 minutes. So adding it back in, and any liquid as well, all back into the original mash and get the mash up to 75. The smell is fantastic. The aroma coming off is boiled grain. is just great. There you go. It's bringing it up now to that 75. And there we go. So I'll leave that for about 10 minutes on a mash, mash out. Just in case you're wondering what I mean by mash out, I'll put a little bit of information up on the screen now. Um, but yeah, it's just it just... It's not always needed, don't have to do it, especially as a stovetop or grain brewer, but I just like to follow the processes. So yeah, that's what a mash out is, so hopefully it's on the screen now. Okay, so there's the mash out done. So I just need to get the grains out, well, get the bag out the wort, strain it, and then get on to the boil. So you can just see here, lifting the bag out, Got the gloves on because it's hot. I know you're doing. It's like a big tea bag, isn't it? I suppose. You just want it to strain the grain, and all I do make this a lot easier is I have a rack and I sit it on top. Hopefully, you can see that. I just not the camera there. He just pulls out the bag back into the pan. So I'll be back when we get to a boil to add in them first lot of hops. As you can see we're just getting to the uh, it's going to come up to that hot break in a minute. All them proteins on top. I could stir that in uh, but I'm okay. So we're nearly at the boil now and then it'll be the first edition of the uh, pearl hops 60 minutes so there we go got to the boil 
So let's get them peel hops in. So there we go, there's the hops. Straight into the boil, just letting them in loose. And then I'll set the timer for 30 minutes and add the second edition, and that is um, Halatau, Halatau and Blanc. Don't know how well you can see that on the camera, but that's my refractometer telling me I have got a 1.050. It's a bit difficult to do it on a 1.050 achieve my target for the pre-boil. When I'm talking refractometer, that's what I mean. And that's a little sample you take from the, the pre-boil work. Okay, the Halatau, Halatau at Blanc, 30 minute edition going in. Yeah, steam all over the camera. Okay, so there we go, 60 minute boil. So now, just got to get this cooled down, get it in the fermenter. I'm going to do uh, pressure fermentation on this and that little uh, uh, mini 10 litre keg I've got. So uh, yeah, so that's the next step, cooling and then into fermenter. Okay, so now I've transferred the wort into the cooling pan, put it in the sink, got the ice bottles out. The next bit will be transferring it into that uh, little pressure fermenter. Hopefully you can see that, that's the colour uh, of the actual wort. So that's exactly what I was looking for, something going to be a little bit amber, malty, Perfect for a, an Oktoberfest Merzen or Marsen or whichever way you want to say it. Okay, so original gravity 1060, just about there. So I'm happy with that. So let's get it fermented. Okay, so I'm putting this through my straining bag again. So I boil it before I use it and then I sanitize it with star sand, then a funnel, and then put it into the fermenter. So it just gives it another way of filtering it. Just make sure you sanitise out, like I said, I literally boil that bag before I do it again in here. So there's the work going in. All I've got to do now is add the yeast. Okay, now the yeast starter that I did, going in. All I've got to do now, put a little bit of pressure on this keg and then let it start fermenting. Okay, so I'm going to give this a burst now of uh, about 12 psi and I'm going to ferment around about that same sort of pressure as well so I'll put on the screen now the benefits of uh, pressure fermenting especially when it's like a lager style beer just purge off you can hear it going in and what I do next take this off and I put what is called a spunding valve on top of here and that makes sure that the pressure, if it gets above that 12, it just lets out the CO2 it's building up. Okay, spunding valve on and if you can just see on the screen, on the valve here, I can then adjust that with this little notch at the back and get it to the pressure that I want to get it at. If you hear that now, you can hear the CO2 coming out. Coming out the back end. So as you can see, I've set that now to 10. So when it starts to ferment, it's gonna build up some pressure, but I'm gonna keep that on 10 now for about two weeks. Um, the good thing with this, it doesn't need dry hopping, so it's no messing, it's dead straightforward. And like I say, you should have seen now the benefits of doing the uh, pressure fermentation, but yeah, so this now, it's going to be tasted in September. So that's it. That's the uh, the brew day done. It's all set up. Put it away. And uh, I will bottle it at some point. I'm going to put it in some flip top bottles or something. And then lager it in the bottle uh, after it's uh, got its carbonation. Uh, and like I say, that's it then for this video. So thank you for watching. Cheers. And I'll see you on another one.